stuff so that my painting is on my right since I paint with my right hand and I have my pendants over here that can help me determine um, what I like and what I don't like. I'm gonna and let something dry and then move around. So the first thing that I want to show is how that works. So notice that I'm starting on this little painting on the left. I'm trying to deepen the colors in it. I'm starting on the left because um, the paint underneath my hand is dry. So by starting from the opposite side over, I can keep painting over toward the right. And I'm just looking, I'm adding color, I'm moving, um, looking for different compositions, and I'll get out my pendant or my viewfinder and have a, take a look at it through those things to get an idea of what it would look like as jewelry. And I do that many times in the process, but the, the key here is just notice I worked on four. I've been working on four at a time, and towards the end, I'll even go back to the beginning, take a look at them, see what I need to add. And this is a great way to work with watercolor as it dries. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the viewfinder to, um, to frame exactly what I want the pendant to glue to. Once I know that, I get my pendant out and I'm going to clean it off of my jeans or my shirt, just make sure there's nothing on it. And then take the diamond glaze, the glue, and put a nice thin layer, not too thin, you want a milky consistency, a little milkiness. And I'm going to pop that in, press firmly, and pull the viewfinder off so it doesn't stick to any glue that might squish out. And then I'm going to use some more diamond glaze and just brush around the edges here to make sure it's nice and sealed on the sides. This needs to dry for at least two minutes. Sometimes I let it sit for a while before I come back to it, but at least two minutes and I can move on. Now that this is dry, I'm going to pull the uh, tape off and remove the paper from the board so that I can cut these out. They're basically ready to cut out now. And I have the best scissors in the world for this. They're the Kai N5240, and they are as good as X-Acto knife in terms of getting really close to the edge and giving me a really nice effect. Um, you can see it right here. This is just really close to the sides, and all I need to do at this point is just do a little trimming. Now I have my work of art and I need to sign it. Um, first I need to be very clear about where it should be signed. The bale is going to be at the top here. I don't want to sign it in the way of the bale because it does take up some space on the back. So I'm going to mark where the bale is and then I'm going to sign and date it on the sides that won't be affected by the bail. And this one's called Corazon, of course. This is a really important step, which is sealing the pendant on the back. And I'm taking the diamond glaze, the same thing I used to adhere the pendant, and I'm just putting a nice thin coat across the back and on the sides. This is going to keep moisture out. It's going to keep the paper from dissolving because of sweat or humidity or anything like that. It, uh, it makes these things durable. They, will, they don't put them in the laundry, but they really will last after you do this step. After the diamond glaze completely dries, which can take a few minutes, I usually leave it for an hour when I'm not doing the workshop, I'm going to adhere the veil. I'm going to use my E6000 here and get a bead of uh, glue and attach it to the textured part of the bale. And then where I marked the back of the pendant, I'm just going to pop it right on there. This takes a couple of hours to dry, which gives you flexibility to make sure that um, it's settling in the right place. I'm wiping off some of the excess on the, on the back side, and then I just set it down and let it dry.